Lo, I am come for the descent of the crystal fire mist into your heart. From my sacred heart, I pour the vial of the crystal fire mist. O oh, hearts of love, are you ready for this fire? Yes. I pray then that you will understand that throughout this dictation the crystal fire mist shall descend drop by drop into the chalice of your heart. Drop by drop of sacred essence of my heart. I place in your heart crystal fire, ruby fire of my body, of my blood. This essence then, concentrate or not, shall be suited to your preparedness. Love is the key to my heart. Therefore, meditate on love in this hour. Meditate on love in your heart, my heart. For I desire that our hearts should be one this day. And I desire that you should meditate upon my sacred heart each day as you pray as you offer the powerful decrees of the violet flame for world transmutation. I ask you to meditate each day upon the immaculate heart of my mother and therefore acknowledge her heart and my heart as one, as twin hearts offered for the salvation of the light bearers of the earth and all who will turn to face the Son of God and therefore receive the rays of light for a purging and a purifying and an action of the sacred fire whereby all might know the strength, the presence, and the will to walk every step of the way home to God. My beloved, would you be that way shower? Yes. I ask you then not to diminish, not to dilute then this manifestation of my essence which I pour into you this day. You have come many miles, millions of miles and centuries. So then you have reached that moment when you reach for the crystal fire mist, one does answer. I have answered the call. Therefore, this Easter conference has been named the Descent of the Crystal Fire Mist. You may wonder, what is this mist, what is the fire, and what is the crystallization of the God flame within you? There must needs be then the purification by water and by blood, the purification by the sacred oil and the sacred bread, for I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. I pray that you will eat of this bread and that you will know that the hour is coming. Surely it is coming upon you as opportunity, beloved, to intensify and intensify again as the fiery coil of your being does reach for the upper chakra. Thus the intensification of the light, beloved, must be sought for and accepted by you. 
And there does come a time in your life, beloved, when nothing else will satisfy your hours, your moments, or your days than communion with the Lord. These are the moments before your entering in when the happiest occasion, even celebrated with light bearers, will have something missing for you because you are about to experience the marriage of the Lamb, the true marriage, beloved, whereby you are bonded to my heart. Thus I place drop by drop of the essence of the crystal fire mist within you, that you might see this as the foretaste of that union. You will knock, beloved, and the door will not be opened, and you will knock again and again and again, and the door will not be opened. And you may be burdened by the weight of oppression and the depression of the world itself, Know this, beloved, it is not because you are not in your right place. Being on the path under the great teachers of mankind is where you belong. But you must remember that there is an ordered path. There is the dark night of the soul, whereby you bear not only personal karma, but planetary karma. There is a path of initiation whereby you come to the presence of God in such an intimate interchange daily and hourly as to shine as the splendor of the sun revealing then the remaining darkness and the ugliness of the human creation and thus you look at the absolute God our father mother and the absolute misuse of the light in the misuse of the energy and consciousness of the father and the mother and you can scarcely abide betwixt these opposites therefore in preparation for the dark night of the spirit you must become balanced in body and soul and in mind and in heart not one of these can be missed and the spirit itself, the spirit of a man, a woman, and a child must be strengthened, inspired, and emboldened. You must be ready for any challenge, any adversary, any condemnation, and any burden then of darkness that does seem as a dark, dark night where there are no rays of light. These moments and hours before the initiation of the crucifixion and before the ultimate bonding to my heart and the heart of your Holy Christ self must be understood. For if you know them not, then you will not be able to interpret your own discouragement, your own disillusionment with yourself and with others on the path. Know then, beloved, that that very hour and moment when you feel dry as a dry hole in the ground where there be no water, in that hour of dryness, beloved, you must stand and still stand to prove the path of your chila ship. It is an hour when all must count themselves as chilas of El Moria, who does lead you in this way of ultimate overcoming. Do not lose the way, beloved, and do not loose your hand from the hand of the messenger who is here to stay at your side and to walk with you through the dark night and the glory of God. Yes, the dark night and the glory, the dark night and the glory, and these alternating conditions of consciousness bring you to the place where they are oscillating with a mighty speed until finally you break loose. And it is all the glory, beloved, and the darkness is behind you. Many hours and days and years will pass for some of you 
ere all of this take place in your being. I come then with your beloved mentor of the spirit, El Moria, this day to counsel you. For there are those who, when seeing the abyss of their own human creation and the abyss of planet Earth and beholding death and hell itself, will step back and say, I will not take the initiation of the dark night of the soul this day or this week or this month or this year, but I will tarry in my level of comfortability and insulate myself from these true initiations of the saints. Yes, beloved, I come to give you a little push for you must have that push and you must go beyond that certain level of life and lifestyle that you have set for yourself, even protected within the walls of this community, even outside as you dot the landscapes and the continents with your flames and presence around the world. Whether in cloister, or at work in the fields or the cities, whether far in time and space, all of you who are true chilas of the will of God are as near to me as my heartbeat and your own, save for this. When you put distance between yourself and myself because you wish to postpone the day of the initiation, I remind you of the day that my initiation began. It was there at the marriage feast in Cana of Galilee. And there did my mother come to make certain that I did not deny or forsake the opportunity for that initiation. Yes, beloved, I was not pleased to begin that day. Nevertheless, the Blessed Mother Mary supported me. My dear mother stood by, gave instructions to the members of the feast, and therefore they did bring the bottles of water, and therefore the miracles did begin in public. And when that public manifestation began, beloved, it was the countdown to the crucifixion. But remember this also, it was the countdown to the action of the resurrection and to the ascension. Therefore, you see, not to take the first step is to be deprived of the last. And thus there were those three years of the demonstrations of cosmic law of the very science of the word and the sacred fire of the Divine Mother that was released for healing. And did I not gain that experience in the Far East in that light and in ancient embodiments and as recently as in the embodiment of Elisha tutored by Elijah? Yes, beloved, we do have our day. May you recognize your day and not postpone it. For here you learn at Maitreya's mystery school, the school of my own beloved guru, whom I called Father. Here you learn the path of the adepts that you would otherwise have had to learn in the etheric retreats of the Great White Brotherhood, but for this dispensation of this hour and this time. As the pall of the astral sea rises and overtakes you, some of you forget. Therefore, lest you forget, I come to remind you that there is not a single chila, whether at Maitreya's mystery school or beyond in the precincts of the world, who does not have the very personal tutoring, instruction, sponsorship, and intense love of my heart and the ascended master's hearts who have pledged themselves to you. You may think you make no progress here or there. You may become discouraged. 
You may think you have not a friend in heaven or on earth, but I tell you, when you have enrolled as a keeper of the flame, pledged to keep the flame of life and of the great white brotherhood upon earth, you do have that sponsorship. You can thin the sponsorship by the breaking of the laws of God and the law of the code of conduct for a true disciple of Christ, a true bodhisattva of Gautama Buddha. But beloved, you have the same means as do all other devotees in the world, the means of confession, repentance, and penance. Therefore, do not hesitate to come before the altar of God. Do not hesitate to receive that living flame. Do not hesitate to put all things in order in your life to pay your debts, human and divine, diligently and to communicate with the messenger or the ordained ministers of this church universal and triumphant. Yes, beloved, I come to you, for there must not be a delusion there must not be a dissimulation. There must not occur in your life the pulling back, the lessening of the decrees, the shortening of the hours of services, the world around. For you see you are taking a step backward. You are decelerating when you do this. And when you deny or lower the full cup of the fire of your heart, when you fail to give the fullness of yourself, and your own body and blood to your Lord, your Holy Christ self, then you shall not receive the return and the mighty abundant gift that does descend even as it does descend this day. I counsel all who will hear me throughout the world to hear only the teachings and the dictations and to fail to put in the hours of the invoking of the violet flame may cost you well your ascension and you to whom I speak know well to whom I speak and those who have not diluted their efforts also know well where you fit on this path of goal fittedness yes beloved I come to warn you that when the earth grows darker as it is still growing darker your auras must grow brighter and brighter and brighter in absolute defiance of that mounting karma that must be consumed by a world conflagration of the violet flame and of the sacred fire and of the descent of the crystal fire mist now then in the descent of the light of heaven there must be electrodes in the earth. There must be those who hold the omega balance in the earth. And therefore, you compel the lightning to descend. You compel the fire mist to descend. You compel the sun of the great central sun. For you are able to receive it in your body. And it does pass through your body into the earth and you remain untouched and unharmed by this lightning and this crystal fire mist, for you have raised and accelerated your vibration to that level. Yes, beloved, this is your calling in this hour, and to this calling I call you to be those mighty electrodes of your Holy Christ self and of your mighty I Am Presence, that the earth might receive the light the lightning and the fire itself for the rebalancing of the elements for the purging of the earth body of pollutions at all levels of the four lower bodies of her evolutions that the earth might receive what is meet for regeneration and resurrection and the coming of a great golden age beloved hearts of light here is the formula it is this if the light bearers who have this teaching will make their bodies the living temple of God, that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit might enter those four lower bodies, might occupy until your full God mastery, might use you then 
You shall see a regeneration and a resurrection of the earth. You shall see the coming of a new day and a golden age. But if there be not sufficient individuals who understand the necessity of intensification, of passing through the dark night of the soul and the dark night of the spirit, of therefore passing through that and then walking the earth as I did in my resurrected body until the age of 81, as I did move on to the Far East and remain in Kashmir, you then, beloved, if you are not willing to walk the earth in your resurrected body as has been done before and may be done in this age, then how will we have a resurrection of the earth body itself? We will not have it. That is the answer. And therefore the light bearers may be taken to other systems. This is small comfort, beloved, for you do not seek to save your lives. You seek to lose them for my sake. And if all of you are removed and what is left is left, where will the Savior be? And to whom shall the Savior descend? And how would you like to be called to a darkened planet sometime, somewhere, because you did not fulfill your personal Christhood, and therefore you should come alone and scarcely find a disciple, but only those who were those left because they did not have a certain level of light whereby they could go to a planetary body of greater light. Blessed ones, to not meet the hour of your moment and your day and your contribution to a life wave is of all calamities the greatest I could know for your life stream. There is no calamity in the physical earth on the fi or the physical body that is so great than for the one who is about to step into the robes of his Christhood to miss that opportunity by a failure in all diligence to know the teaching, to know the path, to know the signs of the tempter and to know the signs of the great initiator and to know the difference between the two. Beloved ones, there is so much that you can attain in this hour and there is so much that has been said. I come to you this day for I desire to see you, you who know that you are the true pillars in the temple of our God in the earth, you who can count yourselves worthy because you know and believe and accept that the Holy Christ self is upon you and with you and you are here in embodiment today to attain your mastery and make your ascension to you I say beloved seek the love and the bonding of the heart to the messenger seek that closeness and that oneness and do not be afraid to daily take up your sword, Archangel Michael's sword, and to slay that dweller on the threshold on every line and instance of your cosmic clock where it does hold you back. Recognize those momentums, and as the years go by, do not allow yourselves to get into that certain rut of consciousness, and it is indeed a rut. And there you will stay, for you have made your comfortable bed there. And how long will you stay? God does not know, for the human consciousness is capricious, unpredictable, and divided. Thus who can predict what will become of that one who continually misses the cycles to cast into this mighty flame of the Ark of the Covenant, that blazes upon this altar in the very heart of the mighty crystal focus. Yes, beloved, it is the day. It is the day of opportunity, and I have come to you on many an occasion in these years, giving unto you the calling of my heart. I ask you to fulfill those callings. I ask you to see that nothing will separate you one from the other and that as fellow disciples you will love one another as I have loved you and that you will love the messenger as I have loved the messenger that the messenger might love you with all of her heart 
as she has loved me. Let this bonding of love be the breaking down of the barriers, yes, the barriers that even present the whole world from coming to the mountain of God. And I speak of the whole world of the light bearers and of the children of the sun, beloved. Yes, let these barriers be consumed. I have called forth the fire this day. Will you appropriate it? Yes. Oh, beloved, will you not take then the remainder of this Sunday to give those calls on the dweller on the threshold of your very self in a mighty momentum in this court? Will you not do it? For I, Jesus, shall remain in this court to offer you my intercession even as does Archangel Michael for the slaying of that dweller on the threshold and the binding of the dragon that does assail you and this church, even the forces of Antichrist abroad in the world. Therefore, we shall remain until midnight, Monday night, that you might have this occasion for such a transformation by the resurrection flame that you will know and feel my sacred heart burning and pulsating within your very own heart. This is my deep desiring this Easter tide, for I see you, the Chilas of Saint Germain and Moria. I see you as my own, and my love for you is a fervent flame of God's holiness, of God's righteousness, of God's tenderness, of God's right mindfulness. I am extending to you all that I am and all that the Father, Mother, God have allowed me to tell you. So I tell you, I offer you my heart this day, beloved. I offer you great blessings of my causal body. Do not allow me to come and find in the end of your being no room for the clutter for the animal magnetism, for the substance of the electronic belt. I desire to see you pass through this season into this month of Gautama Buddha, into this month of the sign of Taurus, whereby you, beloved, might anchor in the earth an extraordinary fire, even the fire that does descend of the crystal fire mist this day. O oh, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden and who labor and continue to labor and to labor. I will give you the rest and the recreation in my causal body. If you will accept that miracle of grace, if you will accept my electronic presence, I am so waiting to assist you, to heal you and to offer you the full and overflowing blessings of the immaculate heart of my mother. You have only to open the valve, to turn the dial, to focus in consciousness, yes, to gain that God-controlled attention on me and my sacred heart for me to do these things for you. Lo, when they tell you, go here and go there and go to the next place, I say, Come, come unto me, come unto me and I will give you healing and rest and surcease. Be then replenished, rejuvenated and regenerated in this hour, beloved. For you have worked and served and toiled long. Now come out of that spiral and let the next spiral of your service and your work be braided with my own light, my own energies of the causal body and of your own. Let it be braided with your Holy Christ self as you say, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Oh, may you say it, beloved, in your heart and know, know, beloved, that the call to the Father, Mother, the call to me, is the call to the everlasting guru, your own beloved Sanat Kumara, who has sponsored us all. I give to you now 
one of the best of his sons, who has never failed you and will not as long as you do not fail the great law.